Hey everybody, final thoughts time for First Contact, which this game is very, very special. It so stands out amongst what is becoming a larger and larger crowd of Codenames-inspired games. You know, these notions of, hey, we have some central mechanism that we can use um, to uh, imperfectly communicate ideas back and forth to each other. And in fact, I can certainly understand why a lot of people say, wait a minute, it sure looks like a Codename ripoff, right? It's literally got a 25 by 25 grid of randomly selected cards that you use to communicate. Why? I... I love code names. Why do I want to play this? This is so unique. Um, and I mean, gosh, I mean, I, I think probably the best way to put it is this is so thematic. This so makes you feel like you are Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner in um, The Rival. If you haven't seen that movie, folks, please go see it. Uh, that you are trying to just communicate by just rubbing two sticks together and saying, well, what is this? And then coming up with something like, I don't know, ah, or, or what, what do the humans mean by that? Th this central idea of um, two-way imperfect communication is what really makes this stand out because, you know, your Mysteriums, your code names, you know, most of the games in this genre are all about, you know, one or maybe two players being clue givers and everything is one direction. I got to figure out how to use these things to get you to figure something out. First Contact makes it a two-way street where, okay, after I've done that and I've literally say, okay, what does this mean? Figure it out. Tell me. After I've done my part, the tables turn, and suddenly you, the human player, are using a completely different form of communication, which just goes to show how insanely alien our two cultures are, that we can't even use the same tools. I use this tool to communicate, you use these tools to communicate, and you have to try to puzzle something together that I now have to communicate. So the clue giving is uh, two ways, but they're done in radically different ways um, that require you to, you know, uh, you know, in interpret each other in, oh man, I, I, I'm just, this is amazing um, how, how well it immediately makes you feel like, yeah, these are the problems I would have if uh, I were trying to communicate for the first time with an alien species and we don't have a universal translator and we are just trying, well, what do you call these two things? And coming up with a word and trying to slowly build up a common alphabet. I, I, I'm, I, I, this game transports you in that regard and that's, I think, what makes it so special. Normally these games, they, in theory, have some kind of theme, but it's, you know, it's, it, it's, it's tenuous at best. I mean, Mysterium is probably the best example, but, you know, uh, this game... Uh, you know, Mysterium doesn't really make me feel like I'm, you know, a Ghostbuster or anything like that. This makes me feel like I'm really trying to communicate with an alien species that often just do things that make no sense whatsoever. Because that's the other beautiful part of it. Um, you know, the fact that, hey, yeah, if uh, both sides are simpatico and you're on and you can make those same intuitive leaps, everything just goes very smoothly and it's a good feeling. But I guarantee you, it will eventually go bad. And eventually, a player will say... This must be what you mean. I hope this is what you mean. I'm going to write down this, and I'm going to base all of my future uh, interpretations off of this. And it turns out you're wrong. I was trying to tell you knowledge, and you thought I was saying liquid. And like, ah, didn't you see that I didn't tap? I, I I didn't um I did I didn't tap that well over there. So I clearly couldn't have meant liquid. And if you leave that out, there will be miscommunications like that. Opportunities missed that can then spiral into this complete and total breakdown of communication where when you eventually realize, oh my God, one of these words clearly does not mean what I think, and I don't even know what it is anymore. Ah! And um, I will tell you right now, folks, that can be a very frustrating moment. And uh, you know that if there's as much as I'm super impressed by this game, I play it as a two-player game and as a four-player game, uh, it is something I would want to warn um, that you have to go in looking for a good, light-hearted time, being ready to laugh at the absurdity when everything goes completely wrong. Um, because if you're not, you can find yourself just getting more and more frustrated and more and more, what you're asking makes no sense. It's literally impossible. There is no word that combines those particular elements or there's no item or whatever because you've made those miscommunications and, and it can uh, be problematic. Now that said, you know, and I and I say that because Jen and I, Jen and I have played this as a two-player game, and we've been married for almost 30 years, and perhaps not surprisingly, 
we're pretty in sync. We can, uh, we actually find the game is almost a little bit too easy, and it's a shame that the rules don't come with any variant to increase the difficulty level in a two-player game. That's a real oversight, in all honesty. I mean, I think the obvious thing was, yeah, you just get fewer rounds to figure everything out. I don't know if that would really work in a satisfying way, though. But anyway, um, and in spite of the fact that we thought maybe it was a little bit too easy as a two-player game if the, if the players really know each other and complete each other's sentences, um, like Jen and I often can, still, we had a great time doing it. But we also played is a couples game where um, you know Jen and I played both as the two aliens trying to figure out what those humans uh, wanted and the two humans trying to figure out those crazy aliens. Um, and we you know we know the people we were playing with, but apparently not well enough because things did go off the rails, and it was kind of a problem for all of us. And I think. It's because we were all trying to game the game so hard that um, it led to frustration. Because the interesting thing is, I, I would have to call this a party game. And that is uh, no more apparent than in the design of these player boards. Because all you can do is write down the words you think you know and the words you think you don't know. And this, I have to admit, is a very frustrating thing for me. Because it introduces a, an element of memory to the proceedings. Because if you, the alien, use a symbol that haven't been used before and like, oh, well, I can write down that you used it, but there's no room here for taking notes. And I find myself so often wanting to take notes. Because what might happen is, you might use the uh, symbol that looks like an L um, at some point. And I'm like, ugh. Well, okay, that could be fast, or it could be, it could be big. I don't know which one of those it is. And okay, well, I'll just try and make my offering, and I'll, I'll try to figure it out, and all I'll do is I'll write down L. I don't know what it is. And I want to say what it might be, and I want to say what items you'd use, because two rounds later, you might throw another L in. Because you, as the alien, are thinking, okay, well, they weren't quite sure what L is, but now that I've, I've put used L in this other context, there's no way that you won't understand what it is I'm talking about here. And I'm thinking, yeah, it was three rounds ago you used the L. I don't know what you were matching it with. Why won't this let me take notes? Because, I mean, if this thing had been twice as big, so I could just write, oh, an L could be this, or this, or this, or this. I mean, and you could. And Jen and I, we did find ourselves trying to take notes. But I think that is contrary to the intention of the design. Because if you do overthink it and try to game out every possibility, and again, keep track of all this stuff, the game can slow down. And then if things don't work out, that's when things could get frustrating. If you treat this as a party game. And that's what I'm saying. I believe the designers intend this to be a party game because there's no room to take notes. You're just like, oh, well, oh, there's that symbol again. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get lucky this time. You know, I, I think you are supposed to play it a, a, a lighter, um, more uh, devil may care attitude. Then that's when it's going to work at its best, and it will flow, flow, flow. Um, if you do play it with a lot of hardcore gamers who are trying to write four rounds ago, you said this, and now you're saying that this is inconsistent with that, so it must mean this other thing. Um, you know, it could actually slow down. So that's something you got to know going in. That's a lesson that Jen and I learned, and so I'm just kind of trying to pass that along. I have to admit, I wish it did let you take notes because I want to use my memory. And I, but in a game where there's already so much mental gymnastics going on, I don't want to have that extra thing of saying, yeah, what were you using L with two rounds ago? I don't remember anymore. Arr, why don't you let me take notes? You just have to let go and say, it's fine. You're not supposed to remember this stuff. You're just supposed to play it by ear and have fun um, when the aliens throw this at you and I don't know what it means. I thought I knew what these symbols were, but considering how the last round went, maybe I don't. Um, and I can't tell you. I can't ask. Um, you know, so that's all very... Uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting observation. So I, I almost want to say the game is fragile because of that, but I don't think it's the game's fault. That if anything, maybe the game could have done a better job at communicating what its intended experience is. And if you are simpatico with that experience, you just play it by ear, happy-go-lucky, hey, if things just go off the rails, enjoy it. Um, because it's supposed to be fun and silly, then you're going to have a great time from start to finish. So honestly, at this point, about the only thing I find myself missing is... Again, for the co-op game, me and Jen, we need a difficulty adjustment. And right now we're going to house rule one, which I don't like at all. Because I should say, this is a keeper. You know, um, we already have code names and Mysterium and Dixit and uh, Shadows Amsterdam and, and a few other of these games. And you know, I think, well, gosh, what, do we really need another one? I mean, does this one really offer something new? 
Like I said right up front, it does. This one's really special. It really stands out. Um, and if I, for whatever reason, had to start purging my imperfect communication games, this is one of the ones that would stick around to the end because it is so fresh and so original. It, um, Like I said, it makes you feel um, you know, uh, you know, an experience in a way that board games rarely do. It's very, very impressive. It's First Contact. And those are the final thoughts, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.